You're watching a High Wire Media Podcast. Sunday's loss was historically bad for the Dallas Cowboys, but they are still 3-3 three and three and have several winnable games coming up. This is far from rock bottom. Many fan bases wouldn't trust a front office and coaching staff with turning things around, but Jerry Jones hasn't given Cowboys Nation any reason to think this season won't have a disappointing end. With bloodthirsty fans calling for Mike McCarthy's job after Sunday's 47-9 defeat, what exactly would that accomplish? Firing head coaches midseason? Seldom work out for teams, and Dallas doesn't have an obvious successor, unless you want Mike Zimmer to take over. There will be plenty of time to discuss McCarthy's job security. In the meantime, bigger problems need fixing. Some of those problems could have been solved in the offseason if the front office knew how to manage the salary cap. Well, Jones was asked about not showing more aggression in the offseason during his weekly appearance on 105.3, the fan in Dallas, and Jones did not take kindly to the hard-hitting questions and had a complete meltdown. Saying, quote, this is not your job. Your job isn't to let me go over all the reasons that I did something, and I'm sorry that I did it. That's not your job. I'll get somebody else to ask these questions. I'm not kidding. You're not going to figure it out, what the team is doing right or wrong. If you are, or any five or ten like you, you need to come to this NFL meeting. I'm going today with 32 teams here. You're geniuses. Yes, that is the Cowboys owner seemingly threatening to fire the radio host on 105.3, the fan for press pressing him about what is wrong with the team. Jones even confirmed he was serious about removing the host. The optics are embarrassing. Jones essentially told the host not to ask him pertinent questions that were all about accountability. He dodged all of them. Jones has gotten feisty during interviews in the past. However, a variety of Cowboy reporters believe they have never heard Jones get as defensive and antagonistic in an interview. The pressure might finally be cracking the pipes. Again, 105.3 The Fan asked Jones extremely fair questions. The Cowboys spent the least money of any team in the NFL over the offseason at $20.7 million. For comparison's sake, the rival Eagles spent $137.21 million, and they ranked 19th in spending. That deserves an explanation from Jones, who is the team's de facto general manager and has final say in personnel decisions. If Jones put as much energy into trying to improve the team as he does dodging accountability, the Cowboys would be in a better place. Nevertheless, the mask is off with Jones, and Cowboys fans thoroughly enjoyed the owner showing his true colors. Following the Week 6 uh, disaster, Dak Prescott has sent a, sent a blunt message to the Cowboys front office. The Dallas Cowboys season is only six games deep, but it has been an absolute roller coaster. A mere seven days after gutting out a huge last-second win on the road, the Cowboys suffered one of the worst losses in the 15-year history of AT&T Stadium against the C Detroit Lions. So how bad was it? Well, Dallas allowed the Lions to score on their first nine possessions. The defense surrendered 47 points, and they were lucky to limit Detroit to field goals when they did. If not for the Lions pulling out some trick plays in the second half, they could have posted a 50-burger. While the Cowboys' defense was an impossible spot down six starters, the offense was close to full strength. Dak Prescott had a rough game, but the Lions dialed up blitz after blitz after jumping out to a big lead, and Dallas' offensive line had no answers. It was clear to anybody watching that Prescott needs more help. It feels a lot like the 2018 season when the team was reeling before it traded for Amari Cooper. Prescott was asked after the loss if Dallas needed to make a similar trade this year, and he offered a blunt response. Saying, quote, we were 3-5 before we got rolling in 2018. Don't be, don't be playing to be 3-5 with this team, however. That's up to the front office. I've got a lot of confidence in the guys we got in the locker room, the young guys coming on. You see Jalen Tolbert getting better. We'll get Brandon Cooks back healthy. My job is to make sure I continue to push the guys in the locker room, make sure they understand their role and how to get better in their role. That's a typical political answer from Prescott. He wasn't going to throw anyone under the bus and outright stating that the team needs to make a blockbuster trade would not send the right message to a locker room. That is likely short on confidence. Not many players would take the high road in that situation, but that is why Prescott is one of the great leaders in the game. Still, it is obvious that Prescott needs more support. Not only did he have to overcome an all-out assault from the Lions, but his pass catchers did not create any semblance of separation. He even struggled to get the ball to CeeDee Lamb. While Lamb finished with 7 catches for 89 yards, he was targeted 14 times, including on Prescott's red zone interception in the first quarter. Whereas Jared Goff threw to wide open receivers all game. Seemingly all of Prescott's throws on Sundays went into tight windows. And that has been the story of the season. 
It's a major indictment on McCarthy as a play caller. McCarthy added motion and pre-snap movement into his play calling last week, but it was nowhere to be found against the Lions. Assuming McCarthy isn't going to change his stripes, the Cowboys need playmakers who can generate separation for Prescott. Jalen Tolbert has come on strong, but most of his, most of his receptions are of the contested catch variety due to a lack of separation. As for Cooks, there's a strong argument to be made that Cavante Turpin should be playing over him. While Prescott has utmost confidence in Dallas's current roster, a trade a la Amari Cooper in 2018 might be necessary to save the offense. Cooper himself is actually available. But this front office proved a long time ago that winning is not their utmost priority. And of course, we also got to address the Devontae Adams trade that just happened, and it proves that Cowboys Jerry Jones isn't serious about winning. The Dallas Cowboys season feels like it's teetering. Dak Prescott was asked, after sun- Sunday's demoralizing loss, if the team ma- needs to make a trade. And like we mentioned, he didn't exactly throw anybody in the bus, didn't really say if he would trade for anybody. And he, like always, expressed confidence in the current roster and took accountability for his own play. Though an admirable stance from Prescott, a profound statement from the face of the franchise might have lit a fire under the front office. As evidenced by his Tuesday meltdown on 105.3, the fan, Jones is clearly feeling the pressure. However, it wasn't enough for the longtime owner to trade for now former Raiders star wide receiver Devontae Adams. Adams was traded to the Jets for a conditional third round pick that can become a second rounder based on performance. While the Jets topped Adams' list of destinations, the Cowboys were reportedly one of the initial teams that checked in on the disgruntled wideout. However, their interest quickly dissipated for reasons that ring all too familiar for Dallas. Long-town, longtime Cowboys insider Jane Slater of NFL Network was told that the team doesn't have the money to absorb Adams' contract and that draft capital next year is more important than ever. The Cowboys currently have $21.7 million in cap, cap room. The Jets had less than $20 million in cap space before acquiring Adams. The six-time Pro Bowler is guaranteed $11.5 million for the rest of the season. He's set to earn $36 million in 2025 and 2026, but that is not guaranteed money. After falling to 2-4 and four on Monday night, the Jets are desperate and decided to take on Adams' entire contract. It was expected around the league that the that Las Vegas would swallow at least some of Adams' deal to get the wide receiver out of town, New York made somewhat of a panic move. Let's make one thing clear, though. The Cowboys are nowhere near as desperate as the Jets. Their Super Bowl window could close as soon as 2025 if Aaron Rodgers decides to retire. At the same time, Dallas's offense is starved for another playmaker. The Cowboys had the draft assets and cap room to make it work, and they seemingly weren't even involved. The Cowboys need a pass rusher, but should in no way consider a trade for Hassan Reddick. The ongoing saga between Hassan Reddick and the New York Jets added a new chapter on Tuesday, as the Jets gave the two-time Pro Bowler and his agent a small window to pursue a trade. Reddick, of course, was traded by the Eagles to gain green this past offseason, but is yet to suit up for New York as he's seeking a long-term extension. He's currently in the final season of the three-year $45 million deal he signed with Philly ahead of the 2022 season. Naturally, as they're typically linked to just about every high-profile player who hits free agency or the trading block, Dallas Cowboys have been viewed as a possible destination for Reddick. But Jerry Jones needs to stay as far away as possible from any trade talks with the Jets. For one, with the money he just gave Prescott and Lamb and the money he's going to have to give Parsons at some point, it doesn't make sense from a fiscal standpoint. Reddick has made it crystal clear that he wants a long-term deal before putting on a new uniform. So even bringing him in as a short-term rental isn't going to work. Just ask Woody Johnson how that's working out. Secondly, this is just too much drama for Dallas to handle right now. Coming off an embarrassing 47-9 loss to the Lions, the Cowboys have enough problems to keep them busy during their bye week, and they don't need to add this to their plate. And lastly, trading for Reddick would actually benefit the Eagles. Exactly how, you may be asking? Allow us to explain. For NFL Insider... Apologies for butchering their name. Josina Anderson, if the Jets trade Reddick to a team in the NFC, they would also have to send a second round selection in the 2026 draft to Philadelphia. In the original trade, New York sent a conditional 2026 third rounder to the Eagles that would become a second rounder if Reddick was on the field for 67% of the Jets' defensive snaps or recorded 10 sacks. Even if he ended his holdout and suited up for New York's final 11 games, 
those conditions are unlikely to be met. But with this clause that was inserted into the agreement by Philly GM Howie Roseman, the Eagles may end up getting a second round pick anyway. Cowboys use Raddick right now? Absolutely. The defense has been decimated by injuries all season long, most notably those to Parsons, Lawrence, Neyland, giving Dallas a far weaker pass rushing attack than anyone expected. But again, Jones should stay away. Even before Reddick was given permission to seek a trade all the way back ahead of week four, ESPN's Jeremy Fowler reported that the 30-year-old wasn't a viable option via trade due to cost. And seeing as how that cost now includes helping out a divisional rival, the Cowboys should just ghost Reddick and his high-profile agent, Drew Rosenhaus, if they come calling. Were the Dallas Cowboys aware that there was a football game on Sunday? Here's none as they were dismantled by the Lions to the tune of a 47-9 final score. It's the worst home loss in the 15-year history of AT&T Stadium, and one of the worst overall losses in franchise history. While the Cowboys are 3-3 going into the bye and are navigating a massive list of injuries this season, feels like it's destined to end in disappointment. Bigger picture notwithstanding, a loss of historic proportions generally would force a franchise's higher-ups to consider seismic changes. If it were up to Cowboy fans, head coach Mike McCarthy would have a bullseye on his back, and the per- but the proverbial ball is in Jerry Jones' court. Whereas many head coaches would be skating on thin ice after a 38-point home loss, McCarthy is seemingly standing on sturdy ground. Longtime Cowboys insider Jane Slater of NFL Network does not believe that Jones will fire McCarthy during the bye week. While a statement should be made, it's not like Jones to change coaches mid-season. It took until after the 2019 season for Jones to fire Garrett, even though Cowboys were going nowhere that season. They finished 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs, and this season has a similar feel to it. Having said that, Jones isn't a total stranger to canning coaches mid-season. In 2010, he handed Wade Phillips his walking papers after Dallas was bludgeoned 45-7 by McCarthy's Green Bay Packers. That decision, ironically, marked the start of Garrett's tenure as head coach. Then an assistant head coach, Garrett was promoted to interim head coach before he was given the permanent title after the season. The problem with potentially letting go of McCarthy is that the Cowboys don't have an obvious successor. Defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer is on a one-year contract, and nobody is pining for him to replace McCarthy after his just-allowed 47 points, 7.5 yards per play, and nearly 500 year- yards of offense. It is far more likely that McCarthy and Zimmer are gone after the season. So, in speaking of that, there's three po- uh, potential Mike McCarthy replacements that the Cowboys should already be lining up. Time for the Cowboys to prepare for the ine- inevitable is now. Like we said, the Dallas Cowboys got blown at it blown out at home for the third time this season, losing to the Lions, 47-9. Game that Dallas was never really in. The team looked lifeless and unmotivated. The defense was decimated by injuries, and the offense had some of their own. But to get blown out and seemingly quit on the field is a clear reflection on the head coach. Mike McCarthy did not have his team ready to play. That has been the case all season at AT AT&T Stadium, a place where most expect Dallas to play their best. The Cowboys went undefeated at home in the regular season last year, but opponents have felt more at home with rival fans even overwhelming home supporters with their own chance. An irritated Jerry Jones sounded off to reporters on the loss at 3-3. The Cowboys are still in the playoff picture, but their schedule after the bye week is daunting. If Dallas endures a lengthy losing streak or limps into the postseason and loses early, McCarthy could be let go at season's end. Should it come to that? We're going to give you three potential replacements that Jones needs to have on speed dial. Right off the bat, number three, Lincoln Riley, the USC head coach. When the Cowboys decided to move on from Jason Garrett after 2019, Lincoln Riley was one of the names mentioned as his replacement. While Riley was still the head coach at Oklahoma at the time, he did jump ship rather quickly. That might leave some to believe he would embrace taking an NFL head coaching job. Riley is one of the, most, is one of the most brilliant offensive minds in football, and he helped turn Caleb Williams into what looks like the next franchise quarterback in Chicago. McCarthy's offense continues to be bland and far too predictable. Riley, on the other hand, is an innovator and loves explosive plays. That is definitely something this offense lacks right now under McCarthy. It would take time for Dak Prescott and Riley to understand each other, and it would be a new system to learn, but it would be worth it. Riley's defenses were nothing great at Oklahoma and have been suspect at USC. He would more than likely hire a great veteran defensive-minded coach to call plays on that side. 
Dallas's offense has struggled to make the big plays this season despite having a Pro Bowl quarterback, receiver, and tight end. Riley would give new life to that side of the ball and maybe even revitalize Prescott's career. Hiring a college coach for his first pro job is risky, but Riley is champing at the bit to get a shot in the NFL. He grew up in Lubbock and attended Texas Tech, so it would be an ideal team to get started with. And then you have Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator. While Riley might be a gamble from the college ranks, Ben Johnson would make a bit more sense to get a job as a head coach with any NFL team. Johnson commanded an offense Sunday afternoon in Jerry World that was a machine the whole game. He's turned Jared Goff into a franchise quarterback into Detroit, and the Lions have made, ranked among the NFL's top offenses since he took over as the play caller. Johnson was a prime candidate for the Commanders and Panthers head coaching positions in the offseason, but both teams went in other directions. Johnson will most likely get a head coaching job this upcoming offseason, but why not in Dallas? Johnson were to come to the Cowboys, the offensive woes might disappear as fast as they appeared this season. Give him Prescott, Lamb, and a new full-time starter and running back, and Dallas could run up points like a cash register. Dre would need to set aside his priority for hiring an experienced head coach, but he should be calling Johnson if he moves on from McCarthy. And of course, at number one, can't forget him, Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick should still be number one. The Cowboys flirted with the idea when it was not certain McCarthy would be back after the playoffs playoff loss to the Packers. Jerry Jones arguably should have made the move the next day in bringing the coach with the most titles to Dallas. Belichick is enjoying reti retirement right now, but many still believe he will coach again. The man in the hoodie might be one of the most boring coaches to ever take the podium after the game, but he has won more than most coaches in NFL history. Some argue that his success is tied to Tom Brady, but he still squeezed a playoff appearance out of the Patriots back in 2021 with Mac Jones. Belichick is arguably the greatest defensive mind in football history, and the Cowboys never need help on that side of the ball in the worst way. Jones would have to give up some, if not a lot, of control to Belichick when it comes to personnel decisions. But he, if he actually decided to care about winning for once, it would be worth it. Belichick preaches discipline and always ha had his team ready for any situation they faced in the game. Both of those qualities are something Dallas has locked or lacked since arguably the new millennium. Belichick would turn the Cowboys around if Jerry gave him a chance to coach again. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below on the topics we covered. Is there anything we missed? Anything we should have covered? Let me know. Of course, if you want to support the channel, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the big D. As always, your support goes right back into the channel, helps us grow our channel, greater equipment, bring a new host, be able to pay them. One day, take this show on the road. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe down below. As always, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.